a voyage to a better place, set sail with all our might. The sun casts a shadow, the moon lights the way. Onward to a new horizon. This is a better day. I'm Tom and I'm Lori and we're gonna go visit the mayor today and we're also gonna learn a lot about Colorado Springs and why it's an age-friendly city and we're gonna meet some citizens of Colorado Springs who are truly living life to the fullest well today we're gonna to bring you more information about what it takes to be, be an age-friendly city like Colorado Springs and where are we at today Lori? we're at Silver Key and we're going to find out how Silver Key is a wonderful resource here in Colorado Springs. Let's go check it out. Hey Lori, we're here in a restaurant. <laughs> Tell us a little bit more about this restaurant. This is the community and dining space of Silver Key's new location on South Murray. And at our old location on Bot, people would come in and they would smell the food cooking. They had no way to come in and purchase a meal and eat on site. One of the really amazing things about this location is that we have a dining room and people come in, they bring their friends, and it essentially becomes an extension of their own living room and dining room, so they're, they're able to eat here. Oh, that's excellent. I know it smells really good. Yeah, shepherd's pie was on the menu yesterday, and I know that we're cutting sweet potatoes right now to roast those off and have those for uh, dinner on Monday. And I'm not sure exactly what's on the menu today, but I'm certain that it's delicious. Lori, tell, tell me a little bit about Silver Key, and why is there a restaurant, and why is there a kitchen? So Silver Key was established in 1971. as a, We're a local nonprofit organization, and the services that we provide allow seniors to remain safe and independent on their own, living in their own homes. Food insecurity is one of the things that we address um, as a primary function of Silver Key. So the Meals on Wheels program and the Golden Circle Nutrition program are the two sort of um, trademarks of the organization right now. And the food that we're able to serve allows seniors to continue to live independently without having to worry about how they're going to get their next meal. Would you like to see the kitchen? I'd love it. All right, this way. ability to put out a half a million meals a year. We currently serve about 2,000 people each month. Um, we're putting out, last year we put out 64,000 meals in Meals on Meals and 107,000 meals in the Golden Circle program. And we're on track to more than um, increase that by at least 10% this year. Golden Circle, that sounds interesting. What is Golden Circle? Golden Circle is a congregate meal program. So for folks who can get out of their home, um, who would like to have a hot meal in the middle of the day, they come to one of 19 locations and they're able to have a hot lunch served to them. So it feels like a restaurant, it feels like fine dining. They get to enjoy it with their friends. So what is Meals on Wheels? Meals on Wheels is actually a national program, and so we, we pay a membership to be a part of the national organization. But it's locally um, processed right here. Um, we have over 150 volunteers in the Meals on Wheels program, and we deliver meals that are freshly prepared right here in our kitchen to seniors who live in the greater Colorado Springs area Monday through Friday. They are able to have a hot meal delivered to their door, and for the most part, these are individuals who are shut in. They don't get out very often, so they can't come to the congregate meal program of Golden Circle. So we take the food to them, they have interaction with a volunteer, they get to share the news of the day, and they get a great meal at the same time. I'm here with Jonathan Lieber today from the Better Business Bureau, and he is going to discuss what it takes to be age-friendly designated business. So, you know, we basically been showing you Silver Key, and they have that designation, which we carry over here 
It's right here on the wall. This is what you're looking for from a business standpoint. So Silver Key is just a great example of what it takes and what we're looking for for these businesses to go through this process and the certification. There's five different pieces to it. So one of them is they have to be accredited with us, first of all. Um, the second part is uh, the physical location. So we'll actually come out to a business's site and we'll take a look at a number of different things. Just as an example, we're standing here in the lobby. We want to make sure that it's kind of clearly marked on the outside, that the address is there. When people are walking in, we want to make sure that the, the transitions from the sidewalk to the parking lot are clear of debris, that they're kind of clearly marked and then it's easy to come in here and access it. Obviously, we've got uh, some wonderful volunteers here that'll sit at the front desk that are there to answer questions. We're looking for seating in here as well. So okay. we don't want people going into a small, kind of darkly lit you know, place where they can't sit down and, and they're not gonna get any help, not gonna get the questions they answer. So we'll look at that physical environment. We'll also look at marketing materials. We wanna make sure when uh, people are presenting, whether it's pamphlets or brochures or it's on the website, anything you're looking at, that um, they're at the appropriate font level so folks can read it. I want to make sure that the colors are contrasting nicely. So you see mm -hmm. on the sign over here, we've got you know silver key in a, on a white background, right. and they've got the black font. You've got some people that get fancy with their websites. So right. Like a blue background with right. a gray font. It's like, you know what, nobody can read that. So making, from that marketing standpoint, making sure that they're kind of following these procedures so that it's easy to read. It's, it's easy to find information, contact information on websites. We're going to do some training with staff members, okay. and we're going to make sure that just the general customer experience is what they're looking for in terms of making sure they're getting their questions uh, answered and that people are helping them. So the importance to a business from that perspective is catering to a demographic that we know in Colorado Springs is growing every right. day. Right. So from, from a business standpoint, the response has been... Encouraging? It's been very encouraging. And I think this is one of those things we've talked to businesses that they, they kind of kind of they'll think about it for a second. That, you know, oh, you know what? That, that's true. Age is, is inevitable, right? This is what I tell folks. Absolutely. It's going to happen whether you want it to or not. That's it's just going to happen. About. And when you look at the demographics here in El Paso County, number one, we have, you know, the, the population is increasing in terms of the number. It's also increasing in terms of age. One of my favorite statistics that I share with businesses, because they just don't really think about this, is that when you look at, this is going to happen next year, this is according to the World Economic Forum, uh, 2017, the, in terms of, we're talking about households, um, just disposable income that, that folks have, 70% of that disposable income will be in the hands of folks who are 60 and older. That's, you know, that's a big number. It's a big number. It's a big number, and businesses should realize it if they're going to be catering to the community of Colorado Springs. Correct. And so when we kind of let them know some of that, some other information, then they look at kind of the data and statistics and understand that this is a population that they're probably already working with, but they want to do more. And right. again, you know, a lot of the folks uh, from you know, 16 and older, all of us, we're looking for trustworthy businesses. But what we want to hope to encourage is that businesses will kind of go through the certification process, probably display that in their place of business, but they'll follow those things we're teaching them. And then hopefully if they're doing a good job, as, as customers come in, they're going to tell their friends. Well, and, that, and we are talking about business. that. And that's right. so important. Because what's the strongest form of advertising? It's word of mouth. mouth. Hi, I'm Lori. Hi, I'm Kathy. I'm one of the volunteer drivers here at Meals on Wheels. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for what you do. You are so so welcome. It's my pleasure, really. I love it. I love all the people I deliver to. They're really nice and appreciative, and I'm just really happy to do it. Well, good. We appreciate it here at El Paso County to help you uh, get out in the community, uh, talk with our seniors and make sure everything's okay at their home. Yes, yes, that's important. It is. Hey, tell me about some of the meals that you deliver. Well, um, there's a hot portion and a cold portion. It usually seems like a lot of food, actually, and I think they've been really happy with the meals. I know a lot of um, people have said how good they are recently, so... Um, Good. And now yeah, they see. They look really good to me. <laughs> and I understand you have a big kitchen where uh, the foods can be prepared and good, nutritious foods can be prepared. It's a nice new kitchen, I think. Yeah. Yes, Excellent. with a new facility. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah, very nice. <laughs> how did you get started doing this, and how does it make you feel being a volunteer for Silver Key? I started about, I think it's been six years ago, with my daughter. We wanted to do something with our charity group, and so um, we started doing it. It was a great thing to do with her, and then she went off to college, and I just kept doing it, and it's just a 
great way to give back a little bit. I feel really good about it. We're here in front of a Silver Key transportation vehicle and you know they use these transportation vehicles for all kinds of things whether it's taking people to appointments or picking them up and taking them to the doctors or even doing some shopping for them but i'm here with stan beckham for with um, the aarp in black forest in yes. black forest and the reason stan's here is to help us understand living life to the fullest also means serving and he has a lot of members in fact, you're 80 year, 80 year young? Yes. And, and he's, the youth that he gets from serving is contagious. And I want him to talk about what that means to ARP and what you bring to the serving the community. Well, we have a lot of, uh, our, our chapter motto is to serve and not to be served. Yes. And that's what we do. We do a lot of community service things. We like to keep people active and involved in the uh, community and in doing things for the community and for the local area. And we've been successful at that. Uh, most of our people are very involved. And that doesn't mean working 40 hours a week. That right. means working two or three hours a week or maybe even a few hours a month. But, but you it all adds me. up. You're busier now than you were when you were. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know why that is, but it seems like it. <laughs> you know, you're not the first one I've heard that from, too. So that means you get engaged, it gives you a sense of purpose, and you can to help but do more. Well, and that's right. And it's, the more you do, the more there is. And yet, you know, we don't overwork people. We just let them do whatever they can do and whatever they want to do. And it, it all helps, you know, every little bit helps and we get things done. Great. Well, you know, that was pretty informational at Silver Key, but all that, all that talk about Meals on Wheels made me hungry. Do you have any suggestions of where we go get some meat? Well, there's only one place in Colorado Springs to have breakfast, and that's the Over Easy. Well, here we are. Let's check it out. Oh, I think we have some of our favorites. This looks like our Tuscan Eggs Benedict um, with our hash browns. Um, these are our uh, Mexican tacos. It looks like we have just classic um, eggs over easy with our famous uh, biscuits and gravy. And then our lovely calorie-free French toast. <laughs> So Liz, tell us about the Over Easy and what makes it such an iconic Colorado Springs location? Oh, uh, you know, that's a great question. Um, I would have to go back to our employees because I think we have so many long-term employees and that's what um, helps us with our business and then our chefs do this great, amazing food. Um, so I don't know about iconic, but I like to be local. You know, and I think it's just um, neat. We, we very much value our employees and our chefs that, you know, it's, it's a small kitchen. And they constantly create these wonderful um, plates of breakfast food. And, you know, we feel pretty special. Now for our show, New Horizons Living Life to the Fullest, we have a senior community that uh, we address. Now, do you have a large senior community that comes in here? Um, we sure do. Uh, a lot of times they'll use our back room or use some of our alternative rooms. We've had um, book clubs in here. We've had the 100 Women of Influence here. And I think, um, you know, with with embracing the senior community. I think our biggest thing is, is you know, can we lower our wait time? And, and that everyone gets seated at a comfortable table and that, um, and that they enjoy their food. And I think so many people have dietary restrictions. And we always try to um, handle that for the best of our capabilities. We have a gluten-free menu. 
if people have, uh, you know, aversion to salt because of high blood pressure, just let our servers know, and we'll try to do our best to accommodate that. So thank you, Liz. Thank you, Over Easy. This is wonderful. This is I can't wait to just to get into this and enjoy it. So thank you so much. Thank you. Lucy Crandall. And Lucy Crandall does such marvelous things here in our community. Uh, she is a regional director for Senior Blue Book. And if you've never seen the Senior Blue Book, you need, you need to have one of these. So tell me a little bit about the Senior Blue Book and uh, what it's all about. Sure. Well, we're a, a senior resource guide and we have over 70 categories of information and basically we got started by Clifton Chadwick who never intended to start the Seniors Blue Book. He intended to retire and live out his golden years with his wife and upon retirement his wife had a stroke and suddenly found himself a full-time caregiver like so many aging seniors do these days and he didn't know where to go for help. He was an engineer, he had no kind of medical background so he started going out and asking questions and talking to people and finding out how they could help him. And he started writing things down on blue paper. And as he was gathering his resources and um, taking his lists around and talking to people, people were asking for copies of his list. And that's how the Seniors Blue Book was born. How does the Seniors Blue Book help our seniors here in Colorado Springs? Well. The great thing about the Seniors Blue Book is there's really something for everyone. Whether you're a brand new senior, just learning how to be a senior, whether you've been a senior for a while, there's all kinds of things to do. So uh, wherever a senior is in their aging process, they'll find something to do in the Seniors Blue Book. Like I said, we have over 70 categories of information. We have things like Medicare and Medicaid information, transportation, food resources, activities, and then of course we, we spend a lot of time and a lot of pages on housing and home health because those are important resources for seniors as they age. Mm -hmm. This can even help their children. Absolutely, absolutely. And what we're finding is a lot of children are doing a lot of research for their parents and for the resources that they need, whether it be home health, a new doctor, skilled nursing facility, an eye doctor. Um, their, their kids are the ones that are going online and, and looking around. How do you get the Seniors Blue Book? Well, there's a, a couple of different ways you can get the Seniors Blue Book. Um, one way is you can be 75 years or older and we'll mail you one. Um, another way is we have racks all across the city. So places where seniors hang out. Senior centers, hospitals, doctor's offices, uh, places like that, the library. Um, you can pick up a guide. And you can find me at all of the different aging expos and, um, you know, fun things like that for seniors to do, handing them out as well. I know it helps a lot of people in Colorado Springs. And now that our uh, city is age-friendly, um, I'm sure we're going to be seeing a lot more uh, ads and more uh, people in your Senior Blue Book. Well, Lori, now that you're done with Lucy, I need to get my hair cut. Let's, let's listen to the carolers for a little bit here because it is Christmas. And they're living life to the fullest. Yes, they are. Well, before we go see the mayor, I better get groomed up and let's go see the manliest barbershop in town, Chuck's. Let's go check it out. Uh -huh. so Chuck, you say you've been here all your life. That's right. And how long have you had the, the shop going? I've only been in this barbershop for 40 years. 40 years. My buddy's got a barbershop up the street. He's been up there for 53 years. I'm the new kid on the block. I'm the new kid on the block. 
Why do you do? So you must have a pretty consistent clientele and you've seen generations come in and out. Oh yeah. How these these guys are cooking kids now. He's cutting their hair when they little bitty guy. Now they come in there and head taller me. Don't you remember me? <laughs> Kid growing up, there's only 35,000 people lived here. Wow, so you have seen the growth. You've got all I can remember stories. when Fillmore out here when that was a dirt road. Well, I remember everybody telling me about going up north where by the academy it used to be just dirt too. So they opened up the air academy when I was in the navy. I wasn't here at all when I come home to the navy. I opened up the air academy and the freeway. <laughs> I was a little kid that lived in 1824 North Nevada. And, and Nevada, that was the highway, the Denver Highway, right there. So what got you into doing uh, the barber thing? I, I had my step-grandfather was a barber, drunk all the time, but he always had a job. So my mother thought it'd be a good idea for, to be, for me to become a barber. So job security. You always, you're always never going to get rich, but you can always find a job. Yeah, because everybody's got a head of hair usually, right? right? Huh? That's what I'm saying. Right. What have you seen from this particular corner as far as community growth and, and just the changes? Well, when I first bought this barbershop, every week there was a wreck out here in this corner. Every week you could count on. Nobody ever got hurt, but there's always a wreck out there. And what's changed that? They put a stoplight up? No, the stoplight was there and he still had a wreck. Wow. That's Colorado drivers though, isn't it? I heard, the, I saw in the paper, it was the worst. Yeah, I saw that But too. they didn't talk, they didn't hear that from a Navy. There yeah. for some yo-yo from California that just moved in here. <laughs> this, this is a Colorado haircut. When you get a Colorado haircut, the women just come to you, you don't have to worry about going to them. <laughs> and an artist and extraordinaire and she is a person that I have to say is truly successful I hear people say if you're successful in business successful in life then you feel like when you get up in the morning you just want to jump out of bed and start your life and live your life to the fullest and this is June Heinzman hey June hi you're right, I do like what I do. And if you can define success by having fun and doing what needs doing and making people happy and beautiful, and then I'm successful. And also, part of this creative thing is starting off with a blank canvas, like you take something like this, and turn it into something like this. When I started seeing you, June, 16 years ago, you weren't painting. No. What happened that made you start painting? I got bored. And I always knew I would start painting because when I was a child, I painted and I drew. Paint by number was my favorite toy. And that was my parents' big splurge. You know, they were not extravagant people, but they would get me paint by number sets. And I just thought that was the coolest thing. And I did paint a little bit, but not much. I did mostly drew, you know, uh, pencil drawings. 
and I knew that someday I would start painting, really seriously. And in 98, I worked by myself in a salon. Remember uh -huh. the Shelton shop? Uh -huh. I was bored. I was lonesome. So that's why I started painting. The only thing I don't like about getting old is I'm having so much fun. I want it to last a lot longer. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's great. Success is yeah. when you want to jump out of bed to go play, uh, but a lot of people don't jump out of bed because they have to go to work. Right. Mm -hmm. Somebody said, uh, if you love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. That's right. Well, Lori, we're looking pretty good with our new dues, and we just had a wonderful meal. And we've learned so much about this wonderful city with mm -hmm. age-friendly certification. Mm -hmm. What do you think we should do now? Well, let's blow off some steam and have a little fun. Let's do it! We're here at the DMV. What are we doing here at the DMV? Well, we're going to spread some holiday cheer before we go see the mayor. Well, we're here at the DMV, and we're excited. The song spinners are going to be doing a flash mob. Get ready for some fun. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in one horse open sleigh. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in one horse open sleigh. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in one horse open sleigh. Dashing through the snow in a sleigh full of joy. Oh, what fun it is to ride in one horse open sleigh. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in one horse open Fortune seemed his lot. He got into a drifting bank and then we got upside. Upside. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride a one horse open sleigh. Hey, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride a one horse open sleigh. Dashing through the skill of light on this happy Christmas night. Off we go. Chandler and he works at, here at the DMV and he's responsible for the wonderful flash mob we had right here at the DMV. Thank you, Lori. Uh, it's something that the clerk and recorder Chuck Broerman uh, wants to have. He wants to bring a little fun into the Christmas season, uh, show, spread a little kindness, especially at the DMV department, if you know what I mean. Uh, kindness is sometimes a little short here, <laughs> so we try to bring it and uh, 
really bring a little sense of joy and a sense of Christmas to everybody in a place where they're not probably used to seeing it. Right. How many times have you done this? This here? is the third time. The third time we, in the third year. We did it at the uh, Garden of the Gods location two years ago. And then in the springtime, we did it out at the uh, Union Town Center location at, at uh, Research and Union. And then uh, now this is, we've out here at the Powers location. Well, great. So watch out. You never know when the song spinners are going to hit. Well, we finally made it. We're at the mayor's office. We're going to interview the mayor of Colorado Springs today. Yeah, we're going to thank him for uh, making the age-friendly designation for our city of Colorado Springs. Let's go see him. Okay. Share with us the age-friendly designation. Well, is. you bet. I, I was approached uh, by a group uh, who wanted to pursue through AARP. Uh, I think there's about 75 cities in the United States that have an age-friendly uh, designation, and uh, we have always had an innovations and aging organization right. here that advocated uh, around issues in support of uh, uh, seniors. And they've kind of coalesced um, and came to me and said, we'd like to seek this designation. And I said, let's do it. We got that designation and they're, you know, we're kind of following up on that. We will probably create a uh, formal uh, city council blessed uh, commission uh, on aging. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the fact of the matter is, uh, you know, we're a large city. We're the 40th largest city in America. A lot of people don't realize we're bigger than Miami, Florida, St. Louis, Missouri, New Orleans, uh, Cleveland, Cincinnati, Pittsburgh, Oakland, Minneapolis. This is now a big city. Uh, and the number of seniors uh, has been growing and will continue to grow uh, significantly. We think it's about 12.5% of the population now. I would suggest that probably in the next 10 years, it will grow to close to 20% of the population. Mm -hmm. uh, you have that big baby boomer uh, group just, you know, getting older every day, including myself. And uh, uh, if it's the reality that we're going to, you know, uh, go from, you know, 30,000 to 70,000 people over 65 in the next several years, uh, how are we... Uh, are we planning for that? Exactly. What are we doing in terms of our uh, recreational opportunities? What are we doing in terms of our cultural? Uh, what are we doing about uh, you know how we uh, uh, plan our cities in terms of accessibility and things like that? Uh, so uh, it, it just makes sense to have a, a group of folks that are very uh, dedicated and uh, visionary in terms of how we make sure that our city uh, prepares uh, for, you know, I think they call it the silver tsunami. I'm not sure exactly what to call it, mm -hmm. but that's reality. We're going to well, have mm -hmm. a is. larger and larger percentage of our population uh, over 65. And mm -hmm. that's what we're constantly readdressing, first of all, the value of seniors and what they're bringing to society, especially Colorado Springs as well as how do we prepare for what's continuing to grow and grow and grow because people are living longer. But we also know that sometimes they're not living in the conditions that we all think we'd like to live, but that doesn't mean life's over. So, you know, we're seeing a lot of that in Colorado Springs, a lot of growth with, with assisted living facilities as well, memory care units to be able to prepare as we continue to, to age in place. You bet. Yeah. Well, and some of this is going to be just pure economics. Yes. Uh, uh, senior uh, assisted living facilities, memory care, things like that, those are somebody's business opportunities, right? right. They're going to respond to demand. And they are. And uh, while there are certainly seniors in need, the fact of the matter is that our senior population is the wealthiest segment of our population. Right and uh, a lot of uh, disposable income. And so it behooves our businesses to be senior friendly. You know, uh, yeah, we want them to be 
somewhat out of the kindness of their heart, but we also understand they're going to respond uh, to their what's economically beneficial for them. Right. And being uh, uh, senior friendly is going to be very much in their uh, economic interest. The um, wealth that uh, retiring baby boomers uh, have and will spend uh, over the next couple of decades is incredible. Right. Well, we're excited to be part of well, the age-friendly city designation and helping you out in any way we can. I appreciate it. Cower Springs is a great place to live and uh, uh, it's just, I think the future is very, very bright. Yes, and our show, New Horizons, Living Life to the Fullest. You are helping our seniors living life to the fullest. That's what we want to do. Thank, Thank you, you very so much. much. Thank you. Thanks for coming Thank in. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, thanks for joining us for this episode. And I'm Tom. And Lori. Oh, my God. That's it. You better live your life to the fullest while you still have time. <laughs>